righteous choice. Alleluia, amen. Come, lift your hearts on high. Alleluia, amen. Let praises fill the sky. Alleluia. to hear God's word and to celebrate Christ's Eucharist. Let us call to mind our sins and ask the Lord's mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of his will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great Lord. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, you see our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Show favor, O Lord, to your servants and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace, that made fervent in hope, faith, and charity, they may be ever watchful in keeping your commandments. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. There is no God besides you who have the care of all, that you need show you have not unjustly condemned. For your might is the source of justice. Your mastery over all things makes you lenient to all. For you show your might when the perfection of your power is disbelieved. And in those who know you, you rebuke temerity. But though you are the master of might, you judge with clemency, and with much lenience you govern us. For power, whenever you will, attends you. And you taught your people by these deeds that those who are just must be kind, and you gave your children good ground for hope 
that you would permit repentance for their sins. The word of the Lord. Lord, you are good and forgiving. You are good and forgiving. You, O Lord, are good and forgiving, abounding in kindness to all who call upon you. Hearken, O Lord, to my prayer and attend to the sound of my pleading. Lord, you are good and forgiving. All the nations you have made shall come and worship you, O Lord, and glorify your name. For you are great and you do wondrous deeds. You alone are God. Lord, you are good and forgiving. You, O Lord, are a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in kindness and fidelity. Turn toward me and have pity on me. Give your strength to your servant. Lord, you are good and forgiving. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, the Spirit comes to the aid of our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought. But the Spirit himself intercedes with inexpressible groanings. And the one who searches hearts knows what is the intention of the Spirit, because he intercedes for the Holy One according to God's will. The word of the Lord. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus proposed another parable to the crowds, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a man who sowed good seed in his field. While everyone was asleep, his enemy came and sowed weeds all through the wheat, and then went off. When the crop grew and bore fruit, the weeds appeared as well. The slaves of the householder came to him and said, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where have the weeds come from? He answered, an enemy has done this. His slaves said to him, do you want us to go and pull them up? He replied, no, if you pull up the weeds, you might uproot the wheat along with them. Let them grow together until harvest. Then at harvest time, I will say to the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them in bundles for burning, but gather the wheat into my barn. He proposed another parable to them. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that a person took and sowed in a field. It is the smallest of all the seeds Yet when full grown, it is the largest of plants. It becomes a large bush and the birds of the sky come and dwell in its branches. He spoke to them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed with three measures of wheat flour until the whole batch was leavened. All these things spoke to the crowds in parables. Jesus spoke to the crowds in parables. He spoke to them only in parables to fulfill what had been said through the prophets. I will open my mouth in parables. 
I will announce what has lain hidden from the foundation of the world. Then dismissing the crowds, he went into the house. His disciples approached him and said, explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He said in reply, he who sows good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed, the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. Just as weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all who cause others to sin and all evildoers. They will throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Whoever has ears ought to hear. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We're basically reading in chapter 13 of the gospel according to Matthew the so-called Sermon of Parables. And I believe that we began last week with the parable of the sower who went out to sow the seed. And now he's continuing in the same sort of agricultural way because that would be the frame of reference of those who are listening to him. Except, of course, for fishermen. But they, they would all know something about sowing seed, growing crops, and so forth. So we heard three parables in a row that are connected. And we start with the parable of the wheat and weeds, or wheat and tares, as they used to say in more traditional translations. A tear is a weed, something that uh, you don't want in your wheat field, and yet they're going to happen. And then we have the parable of the mustard seed and the parable of leaven for the loaf. And then Jesus comes back and gives us an interpretation of the parable of the wheat and the tares. So since we're going to come back to that, I'd just like to say a few words about the parable of the mustard seed. A few years ago, I was going on about this parable in Natalia there came up and gave me this little packet that has two mustard seeds in it, and you can hardly see them. Well, especially back there. I can hardly see them here, but I'm old. Anyway, <laughs> they are very, very tiny. And we had a great retreat in the spring, uh, fall of 2012 about the parables, and I took lots and lots of notes and wrote them up. And I really found them useful. Father Eugene Hensel, Benedictine from St. Midrands in Indiana, just a wonderful teacher of scripture. And he knows his stuff. He knows his agricultural stuff, too. He points out that there are basically three kinds of mustard seeds, black, brown, and yellow. You probably know this. They've been used since time immemorial in cooking. They're not really technically the small list of seeds, but they sure look it. And he points out that in the Middle East, in Palestine, Israel, that whole area of the world, mustard shrubs are very common. I've seen them there. They grow by the roadside. And he doesn't mince words. He says they're rather ugly, actually. And above all, they're just ordinary. You see them everywhere. And he said, now other rabbis used other metaphors for growth. And he cites, for example, Ezekiel 17, in which God, speaking through the prophet, says, I myself will take a sprig from the lofty cedar. Picture those magnificent cedars of Lebanon. I will plant it that it may produce boughs and fruit and become a mighty cedar. I will bring low the high tree and raise up the low tree. And Father Eugene said, now that has pizzazz. 
but a mustard seed uh, does not have pizzazz, no. What is Jesus telling us? That the kingdom of heaven is not, at least at first, like the big, the grand, the expensive, the beautiful trees like cedars of Lebanon. The kingdom, in a way, is ordinary, encountered in our ordinary lives, just like the mustard shrub, which is regular, ordinary, and grows everywhere in Palestine. So, as I've mentioned since I've been here in the last seven years, there's something that is very powerful about Jesus' proclamation, his parables, and above all, his initial pronouncement. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. I said this early on in my stay here, and I know that uh, Jamie, anyway, will always respond correctly when I say, what is Jesus saying? When is the kingdom of God? Where is it? Here. Thank you. You do not disappoint. Now, you might say, what? The kingdom of God's in Statesboro? Yes. Well, I thought it was on some glorious mountaintop, you know, somewhere else, out there somewhere. And the good news is, no, it's, it's here. And he asked, what would happen if we actually paid attention to the ordinary? to the mustard shrubs, to the people who are right here and right now. He says, we often look in the wrong places for the kingdom, and we seem to look sometimes everywhere but at the mustard seed or lowly shrub where it is. There's something very similar in the parable of the leaven. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed with three measures of wheat flour until the whole batch was leavened. A little bit of yeast in those days taken from sourdough, from an old loaf. You, they didn't have 7-Eleven, so you, you had to keep sourdough going in your kitchen. Pinch off a little bit of it, and it raises the whole loaf. If you don't put it in, you get matzah which if you've been to the Seder Supper, you know is like this big unsalted cracker. No, yeast makes all the difference. Turns a little bit of flour into a piping hot baguette, you know, one of those lovely French loaves that's the staple of a whole culture. Now, returning to the parable of the wheat and the tares, Rabbi Jesus explains that the Son of Man who is the Son of Man when Jesus says the Son of Man? Who's he speaking about? Himself, yes. So is the good seed, which brings forth the children of the kingdom. But there's bad seed that brings forth weeds, tares, and the one who sows that is the devil. But he points out that the wheat and the tares must grow up together and coexist until the last day when the Son of Man will send his angels to remove from his kingdom all who cause others to sin, and all evildoers. Then and only then will they be thrown into the fiery furnace. From the time of Jesus, who after all called Judas to be one of his disciples, there have always been sinners in the midst of God's holy people. There have always been tares among the wheat. Now we know this, we acknowledge it. And yet it seems, especially some of the major scandals we've had, to shake the faith of many in the basic holiness of the church. And I'd like to speak about that for just a minute. In the creed, we proclaim four marks of the church, that it is one and holy and Catholic and apostolic. All right. The holiness of the church is not accidental, it's essential to the church. And it's not a matter of mathematical calculation. Let's take the total number of saints minus the total number of sinners and what? No, it doesn't work that way. The reason the church is essentially holy is because it is called, summoned, and gathered by the holy God of Israel. 
to be the body of his son, Jesus Christ, the Holy One of God, and the temple of his Holy Spirit. So I know it's a kind of abstract distinction, but the church is always inherently and essentially holy. It is not inherently or essentially sinful. But we can't deny that there are sinners in our midst whose sins diminish the splendor of the Holy Church. It's easy to adopt the opinion of the slaves in the parable and to propose ripping them out and burning them up. Well, we've done that occasionally, but it was a long time ago. This is the response of Puritans throughout history, conceiving the church to be the faithful remnant of the house of Israel. But our theological response to this, our traditional response to this is no, no, we have we are aware that the sinners in our midst have the possibility of repentance and being reconciled to God and the church, particularly in the sacrament of reconciliation. We need to remember what Jesus says. If you pull out the weeds, you might uproot the weed along with them. Let them grow together until the harvest. But I'd like to go one step further, maybe deeper. What about the weeds and tares growing in our own souls? Aren't we supposed to rip them out? Well, with God's grace, we can weed our garden a little bit, cultivate the virtues that will combat our vices. But I don't think he's calling us to self-destructive behavior, self-hatred and loathing, self-flagellation. We need to remember that our purification is ultimately an action of God's grace with which we are to cooperate, but it's not primarily our own action. For instance, some people become so ashamed of their sins, so frustrated by the weeds and tears of their lives that they become suicidal self-loathing. This is not helpful to a healthy spiritual life. Now it can be hard for some of us to be patient with ourselves, particularly if we're inclined to forget that we can't save ourselves, that only God can save us. But we've been reminded, especially in the first reading from Wisdom, that God shows his almighty power precisely by having mercy on us sinners. And it's only repentant sinners who become the righteous who will shine like the sun in the kingdom of the Father. I believe in one God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, came down from heaven, and by the power of the Spirit was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
We now offer our prayers of petition to God the Father, the giver of all good gifts, confident that he will hear and in his wisdom answer our prayers. We have come together to be present to our Savior in worship and prayer. We offer our petitions to the Father. That the shepherds of the church, including Diocese of Savannah, Bishop-elect Stephen Parks, will proclaim Christ, admonishing and teaching with all wisdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For the spiritual growth of our parish community, especially during this time of fear and hardship, that we will commit ourselves to the truth of the gospel with zeal, self-sacrifice, and hope. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Christian husbands and wives will be blessed and strengthened so that the love of God will be made visible to the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who risk their lives in order to protect the lives of others, that they may be strengthened, shielded, and aided. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who risk their lives, I'm sorry, for those working to find answers that will end the pandemic, give them wisdom, strength, and encouragement. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace this week to remain free from worry and anxiety, confident in the Lord's victory over sin and evil. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, especially Orion Coughlin and Jeanette Dowdell, <clears throat> may they rest forever in the peace of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, guide us in the right paths and give, give us courage to face the challenges of life with grace, humility, and courage. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Lord, 
O God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion varied offerings of the law, accept, we pray, this sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel so that what each has offered to the glory of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, death O Lord, Lord, and, and profess, profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, 
so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Matthew and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Stephen, our Bishop-elect, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy, thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the, the power, power, and the, the glory, glory are yours now, now and forever. forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you, you take, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not, not worthy, worthy that, that you should, should enter, enter under my, my roof. roof. But only, but only say, say the, the word, word, and my soul, soul shall, be shall be
an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love
vita duce de lo, et spes nostra salve. A te clamamus, exules fili erge, a te suspiramus, gementes et flentes, in hac lacrimarum ave. Ea ego, ad hoc ata nostra, ilos tuos, misericordes oculos, ad nos convete. Et Iesu, Benedictum fructum ventris tui, nobis, post hoc exilium, ostende. O clemens, O pio, O Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, today is Keegan Ditto's last Sunday with us. Uh, after four years, four or more? Five. five, I thought five. They wrote four, but I, yes. Dag now, but I hired you when I was still the pastor, yes. Uh, he's done a great job as, as music director and organist. Works long, long hours practicing. I can come in here at almost any hour and there's Keegan playing away, getting better all the time. We're gonna miss you. And he and his wife, Molly, will be moving to Washington State. Oh, God help you. I mean, um, uh, all the best. And please remain in your pew until an usher dismisses your row. If you wish to spend time praying after Mass, you're welcome to stay. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.